Hello, my name is Erika Arban, and I am a Senior Research Associate at the Center for Comparative Constitutional Studies at Melbourne Law School. I am also a adjunct professor at the University of Milan Statale. I am deeply grateful to Giuseppe Martinico and Cristina Fasone of the Editorial Board of Diritti Comparati for their kind invitation to present in this blog my monograph Italian Regionalism and the Federal Challenge, Reconciling Economic Regionalism and Solidarity, which was recently published by Palgrave. So the core aim of the book is to retrace the longer trajectory of debates on federalism and regionalism that have taken place in Italy, starting from the time of unification, so back in the 19th century, as well as the constitutional solutions that have been adopted or just discussed to accommodate the many asymmetries that characterize the country, particularly, but not exclusively, the north-south divide. The book thus sits comfortably within the literature on multi-level governance, and on the complex relations among the different layers in a compound polity. The Italian regional model currently in place has been defined as an innovative experiment, a sort of compromise between unitary and federal models. Accordingly, the central claim in the book is that Italian regionalism combines lessons coming from various theoretical experiences, including federalism, regionalism, substate nationalism, and the European Unification Project. By looking at the Italian case, the book addresses two main questions. First, how to define economic regionalism from the point of view of constitutional law. And second, how to reconcile economic regionalism with concepts like solidarity, subsidiarity, asymmetry, and substate national theory. To address these questions, I structured the book in six chapters. Chapter 1 sketches the theoretical framework, the foundations for the analysis that follows. To this end, it condenses existing literature on federalism, regionalism, and substate nationalism. The chapter presents federalism as an umbrella term that includes different experiences, not only fully-fledged or classic federations, but also regional states which are thus construed as variants of the more traditional federal paradigm. The chapter then offers an overview of some of the key features of substate national theory. So these are three theoretical strands, federalism, regionalism, and substate nationalism, all conflate in the Italian case. Chapters 2 and 3 focus on the past, present, and future of Italian regionalism, as they concentrate on Italy by exposing the interconnectedness between the various theoretical perspectives illustrated in Chapter 1. Specifically, Chapter 2 delves into the debate on federalism in Italy before and after unification, and shows how federal ideas have played an indirect role in forging the unitary state emerged in 1861, although federalism was eventually repudiated by the fathers of the Kingdom of Italy. Chapter 3 discusses how federal ideas have powerfully re-emerged in the early 1990s, leading to the constitutional reform of the regional model in 2001. The chapter also speculates on the present and future of Italian regionalism, emphasizing some of the shortcomings of the current constitutional scheme and the political debate, particularly on a differential regionalism. The remaining chapters detail what I consider being some of the most interesting lessons coming from Italian regionalism and that might have a broader comparative reach. Chapter 4 introduces economic regionalism in constitutional law, pointing to similarities and differences between economic regionalism and substate nationalism. The chapter then sharpens focus on Italy and the north south divide and situates the Italian case study at the intersection of economic regionalism and substate nationalism. One key argument put forth in the chapter is that although economic regionalism appears at a time to be less deserving special analysis, this cannot by itself eliminate its existence. In doing so, the chapter also explores the principles of subsidiarity and asymmetry as potential constitutional law solutions to economic regionalism. 
Chapter 5 opens up a discussion on solidarity in the context of federalism and economic regionalism, and broadly explores the issue of how it is possible to reconcile economic regionalism with principles such as fairness, equality, and solidarity. By delving into the difference between horizontal and vertical solidarity, the chapter concludes in the sense that federalism and solidarity are compatible ideas because they serve different purposes. Federalism reconciles unity and diversity, while solidarity fortifies the family-like relationship among various federal subjects. Finally, Chapter 6 brings together federalism, economic regionalism, substate national theory, and solidarity, and focuses on the importance to acknowledge, for prudential and principled reasons, asymmetrical socioeconomic interests. A range of solutions is then proposed to mediate between competing interests. The book ends with a provoking question, in the sense that I ask whether a discussion on economic regionalism could lead to a conceptualization of what has been labeled spatially concentrated economies that could thus become the basis for the creation of regional units premised on economic and political force. In other words, I ask whether it would be worth rethinking the geopolitical and authority boundaries of a federal and regional units in such a way that takes into account issues of economic strength or presence of natural resources to better deal with local pressures as those examined in the book. After all, as the Italian case shows, spatially concentrated economies can represent an element of fragmentation. This question is open to further analysis and research. In my opinion, the originality of the book rests on the fact that it explores the Italian case study, which is rather unique in its own features, to sharpen focus on issues of economic regionalism, a theme that until now has found little space in constitutional law scholarship. A theorization of economic regionalism from the point of view of constitutional law is relevant because it offers an opportunity to reflect on how to reconcile diversity and social cohesion and thus create a more constructive and positive environment for individuals and the collectivity to flourish. This was a short summary of my monograph. I hope you enjoyed the presentation. If you have similar research interests or would like to share insights on this or on related topics, please get in touch. Thank you so much for listening, and again, many thanks to Giuseppe and Cristina for their invitation.